We're now going to focus in on these transition ducts going from the supply duct out to the registers, the boots on the exterior wall. To insulate this transition duct, we're going to use fiberglass bats. These bats are cut approximately 15 and a half inches wide, three inches deep. They're perfect for sitting between the floor joists up here. And as a result, we're going to sandwich this round transition duct between two bats of fiberglass. To make this job a little easier, you may want to do this in sections. And most important are gloves. Because coming through the floor up above, we have a bathroom floor with ceramic tile. And as a result, they put in a subfloor for real smooth surface for that ceramic tile. But they put in these long staples, which are about anywhere from a half inch to three quarter inches long. And what you can see here, what might happen if you caught these without a piece of, without your gloves. Okay, Cesar's cut me a couple pieces here, and we're going to need about uh, 16 feet to run the length on the top of this fiberglass bat. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up. We're just going to work our way down the entire length, putting it on top first. Now then you're going to come in contact with electrical lines, maybe duct hangers. And so you're going to have to work this material over the top. And this is why sometimes it's good to work with smaller pieces. Kind of pull it down a little bit as you go. Okay, we're coming into the boot that ties into the supply trunk here. So we're going to have to put in a piece on here. And then we'll wind up laying in some fiberglass bat up on top of the supply trunk. Now we're going to have to come in with the bottom piece of the sandwich and lay it in on the bottom. And we're going to spend a little time stapling with the staple gun to hold that string up, hold it up with some string. But while we're here, I want to point out these two adjacent ducts. They're round. They sure look like supply duct. But when you get on the far ends, you'll notice that those ducts go directly outside as opposed to turning into a vent on the end by the foundation wall. They jut outside. And then when you come back to this other side, you'll note that we have one high open duct and one low open duct. This is bringing the combustion air in for our furnace and our hot water heater. Unfortunately, in doing energy audits over the years, even though I'm the electrical guy, I walk into many gas and propane houses and I see these things blocked off. Do not block off these ducts. They're designed for these higher efficiency furnaces, as well as the fact that we're building tighter homes and they're not as drafty. We have to bring combustion air in. OK, I'm going to start my string that's going to hold up the fiberglass bat here. And I'm going to tie it off here on this staple that's holding up a ground wire. You can put this string on a staple like this, or you could actually put it on the ground wire on a piece of pipe, or you could start off with a staple that you put into the floor joist yourself.
Here, I'm working back from the supply trunk out to the register. People are often tempted to just staple the paper directly to the sidewall. And that's good unless, of course, after a few years, gravity pulls this paper loose and it tears free. Now, that's not too bad as long as you don't have your basement finished off and you don't have the ceiling sheetrocked. But if you've got the ceiling sheetrocked and it pulls apart and falls down, now you're not insulated directly to the duct. And often you'll have a piece like this here, a boot that goes out and goes right up. This is one place I really like to use the expensive $15 roll duck insulation. It adheres nice where you have all these tight binds. I don't mind wrapping fiberglass bat around something long like that as long as it stays above the supply trunk. But when it drops down out of the supply trunk, we don't want to lose the headroom. When the, when the finished carpenter finishes off the basement and wants to box this in. So this is a real good place for this material. But right over here, and it's kind of hard to see behind this structural pole, but we have the furnace flue. This is where the exhaust is coming out of our furnace and our water heater. And you'll notice that, that this is a triple wall. This is what we call a vented pipe that the flue goes through. And this is, this is vented all the way up through the attic, through the first floor, on up through the attic, and this triple wall adds air between here, kind of ventilates it, so you don't have direct heat against anything. But I really don't want to put this craft paper directly next to it, so I used, again, this material here on that section of ductwork going to this portion. Remember, we will never insulate this hot flue.